Thank you. Good morning. I was supposed to be born here. Well, not necessarily in the Shah Mosque, but in Isfahan, in Iran. And I'm going to date myself to some of you history buffs when I say that three months before I was born, my family was evacuated from Iran. The Shah was about to be overthrown, and the Ayatollah Khomeini was going to be invited back after 14 years in exile. My mother landed in Boulder, Colorado. And shortly after that, my father joined us. See, apparently, he wasn't leaving Iran without the Persian rugs. <laughs> I was then invited into the world. That small blob in the middle there is me. But I don't remember much of my Colorado experience. Six months after being born, we moved to Saudi Arabia. And one year after that, my parents accepted jobs at the International School of Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. This is where my story really begins. See, I'm a third culture kid, more often referred to as a TCK. And the term TCK was coined by Ruth Usim, herself a TCK, in the 50s. And since then, we've become, we've become known by a myriad of other terms, all used, all describing someone who has spent a significant portion of their formative years living in a culture other than that of their parents. So I'm here today to share some of my experiences growing up, and also to hit upon three points about being a TCK that have had a profound impact on my life. I should start by mentioning my third culture experience is very different from that of normal TCKs. This is my yearbook page, the senior year of my high school career. And next to me is Kelsey Wagner. And I know this doesn't look special in any way. I can assure you that it is. See, of the 124 graduates of ISKL that year, only Kelsey and myself were afforded full pages in the yearbook. See, full page spreads were reserved for students that had attended ISKL from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. And that's a pretty rare, rare thing for a TCK in any international school. Most third culture kids jump around from country to country every three or four years on average, following their parents' postings. But that year, Kelsey and I graduated from ISKL, spending our entire schooling career in Malaysia. And Malaysia is a pretty unique place to grow up. Besides having amazing food, a mixture of Malay and Indian and Chinese cuisine, it also has perfect weather, 27 degrees every day of the year. <laughs> this is a little cold right now, by the way. But it also afforded me some opportunities that I probably wouldn't have had growing up in the United States. I got to coach golf at a fairly early age, probably bypassing all sorts of things you'd need to do to become a teaching professional for the USGA. I got to engage in some activities that slightly skirted the safety regulations that were pretty stringent from my home country. I got to give concerts at Christmas on fun-looking instruments. And I got to hang out with some pretty unique people. Uh, one spring break, we went to Sarawak in East Malaysia and spent a week living in a longhouse and I spent the whole week hanging out with this lady. And besides having a leaf that's slightly bigger than my entire body at the time, you might notice that she's wearing earrings that are weights, and her earlobes are down to her shoulders, which I had never seen at that time, and I probably would not have seen at the time, at least, in Boulder, Colorado. See, Malaysia was a true mixture of race, language, religion, socio and economic backgrounds, and all mixed together in this nice blend that really made it a true melting pot of humanity. In case in point, in seventh grade, we were researching world religions, and we took a field trip. In that field trip, we visited a mosque and a church, and a Buddhist, Hindu, and Taoist temple. And those last three temples were actually all located on the same road. And what I witnessed were people weaving their way in and out of each of these temples freely sort of peaceful coexistence, if you will. And it was experiences like this that changed my way of thinking, and my thoughts on believing, and my ideas of what made people happy. And it was something that I thought the entire world shared as a viewpoint. TCKs, although having a general increased tolerance of differences, also are fairly naive with how the world actually works. And sometimes this naivety is met with an awakening from the least suspected source. Every summer, 
we would travel back to the United States. And I would spend my days with my grandmother watching reruns of TV, especially shows that never made it to Malaysia. It was actually this refill, if you will, of pop culture that in my mind truly was my stability of being an American. It truly was my identity of America, is this pop culture. And I remember a summer between my 10th and 11th grade year, my grandmother asked me, Mark, what do you like doing in school? My response, Grandma, I really like playing basketball. She said to me, why do you want to play a sport with all those sweaty black people? Every internal alarm inside of me went off and I froze. Had I heard my grandmother correctly? And I took one look across the room at my father and I realized that I had. His eyes were closed and he was shaking his head and a sigh was firmly planted on his face. See, this was my context, my black people, if you will. My hero at the time was Akeem Olajuwon and he had just won his first NBA championship. He was the NBA MVP, he was the Defensive Player of the Year, and he was the World Ambassador of Basketball. And just four months earlier, I had got to meet him in KL. So you can see how I was slightly confused in my grandmother's comments. There is a time in a TTK's life when their norm is shattered, and this was mine. I remember back to that moment many times in my life, and I really appreciate my parents' ability to talk me through my confusion and to continue to raise me to see every color as beautiful. I had to repatriate back to the United States for university. And I remember waving to my parents uneasily as they got on a plane to go back to Malaysia for the first time without me. I was standing firmly on American soil, the land of my birthplace and the country of my passport, but definitely a foreign land. And the next three months, can only be described as comical. I assimilated back into Southern California living in the same inconspicuous manner as Eddie Murphy blends into New York <laughs> when he goes and coming to America. I didn't know how to get around. I didn't know what an ATM was used for, nor what an ATM machine would ever look like. I didn't understand free refills on soda, and I sure as heck did not know anything about parking. See, I had learned how to drive in Malaysia, which is fairly sane. But the parking is a free-for-all. And so when I got my first ticket for parking with my right wheels, not a Lexus, I didn't have a Lexus back then. But when I, had, when I got my first ticket for parking with my right tires more than 18 inches from the curb, I knew that I had some things to learn about my homeland and that this whole reverse culture shock thing was real. So I dipped into my TCK bag and I pulled out my adaptability and my flexibility. See, these are things that third culture kids get by having wacky experiences all over the world in random situations. And I combined it with my knowledge of pop culture. And so to me, that meant Seinfeld and Michael Jordan, and Snoop Dogg and Nirvana and playing Nintendo 64 GoldenEye. <laughs> and this is really how I negotiated the relationships with my new American friends. We'd spend time bonding over video game tournaments we would play guitar in our dorm rooms, and we would spend hours on this basketball court just outside of our dorm rooms, where I'm sure we were all sweaty. See, the thing about TCKs, research has shown that they tend to do better at adapting in new environments and new cultures. Something about a tolerance for differences combined with the fact that we need to fit in. We have to find our role in some social structure. And these skills, are transferable way past just the social norm into the workplace. See, one of the nice things about growing up overseas is you can't usually work in the country you grow up in. So I didn't have a job until I was in university, but I did hold six different jobs before I landed into my current career. And in each one of those positions, I had to negotiate completely different personnel structures, and I had to complete a fairly esoteric set of tasks. And my adaptability helped me be successful at that. Adaptability and flexibility will be paramount in the workplace of the future. And I'm not talking about some distant future. Amazon, four days ago, announced the opening of their new store that doesn't have the need for cashiers. The human employees at this store will be tasked with customer experience. And since we've all been customers before, we know that that is not going to rely on a static set of skills. 
students and young adults moving into the workplace will really need to be able to adapt quickly and undertake a wide variety of tasks simultaneously. The last piece that I'd like to, to mention is that of the now. This is a chorus from one of my favorite songs from my favorite band. And time and time again, I run into people who are unable to move forward because they're holding on to something in the past. Whether it be mistakes made or missed opportunities or just generally a random dumb turn of luck. They're unable to think what they're going to go do because they're holding on to this past. Also, I see people who spend an inordinate amount of time imagining and planning their future and trying to fit little pieces together to try to make it a reality instead of just enjoying now, the moment you're living right now. And I think that the most powerful thing about growing up as a TCK was it taught me how to live now. See, I think it comes a little bit from having no stability whatsoever. My friends would constantly come and go, and my world was constantly changing. And I learned pretty quickly that I couldn't rely on the future to stay the same. And there was no point in looking back at a past that you couldn't change. This has a fairly valuable side effect. See, TCKs are pretty good at dealing with change and massive upheaval. So we said a little better, we generally have a pretty good plan, but we're not very good boxers. <laughs> if you asked a young Mark where he was from, <laughs> he would say America. If you asked the college age Mark who was living in America where he was from, he would most definitely say Malaysia. And if you asked the Mark standing on stage right now where he's from, well, I'll just say that I'm from the same multiverse that we all currently inhabit. But I do know where I belong, and that's right here, right now, with all of you, enjoying the TEDx event. Parents, take your kids traveling. Take them all over the world. And kids, tag along, even if you don't think you want to. I guarantee you, you'll gain some insights that will be valuable later in your life. And who knows? Maybe somewhere down the road, in some far-off, distant part of the world, you'll run into someone you haven't seen for 20 years since you shared a full-page yearbook spread with them Thank you. <laughs>